buenas tardes. Eh, voy a hablar en inglés, pero voy a hacer la, una pequeña introducción en español. Eh, pues es muy emocionante para mí estar acá. Uh, sorry for my uh, colleagues that speak English only, but yeah, this is going to be a quick introduction for my uh, uh, fellow Colombians. Um, es muy emocionante estar acá. Yo soy egresado de la Nacional de Arquitectura y he venido haciendo investigación en, en este tema, en, en materiales eh, de ingeniería eh, de bambú. Um, he hecho un doctorado en el Reino Unido y desde ese momento pues, he estado en el Reino Unido trabajando. Hoy día estoy con la Universidad de West of England en Bristol. Uh, ahora, inglés. Uh, hi everyone. Um, so, yes, um, I'm not representing uh, Engineer Bambu, uh, but what is the issue about, is about Engineer Bambu for structural applications. And, and let's, yeah, let's start with the presentation. So, this is just a, a um, an outline of my presentation. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my research, a bit about my research, uh, why I'm doing what I'm doing, uh, how I'm doing it, uh, what, for, and, and what's next. Uh, but before we start, I want to show you something, just to, uh, to pick your brains a little bit and show you, show you something here. So this is a building built with timber. It's 18 stories. It's built in Canada, and it was built in uh, nine weeks. Uh, you can see, well, this is, this is all about prefabrication using timber as a main component, as a main structural component. Of course, you see um, uh, some bits that are concrete, the foundations and the first floors, and then you also see the, uh, the lids. So you have, uh, yeah, you, you can see the, the time bomb. The time bomb, of course, but the information about the, uh, how the building progressed. Uh, thank you, was So yeah, it was about, uh, it was built in about um, uh, nine weeks. Uh, all the columns and the slabs, uh, but you can see here that they use per floor about 29 um, um, panels for the floors and so on and so forth. So this is 18, 18, um, 18 stories. They took about, um, I think they, they talk about um, building uh, a floor um, every two days or something like that. about 2,240 cubic meters, that's, that's an impressive amount. And of course that relates a lot to CO2, because wood, as other natural materials like bamboo, they capture uh, CO2 instead of releasing it. Um, so, uh, so this is been possible thanks to a technology called, well, called cross-laminated timber. It's a technology where you have uh, plants of wood that are cross-laminated in three, five, or seven layers. Um, and we have here another uh, tall timber building. Um, this was in Norway. Um, and it's, it's, it's about the same, the same um, um, height, I'm not about. Uh, Yeah, it's this one. That was the previous one, 49 meters. And the one that we saw in the video is 53 meters. And this is something that has been uh, evolving um, across the years. Uh, one of the first buildings was built in Glasgow. There is another sort of uh, very important building uh, built in 2009 in London uh, that was a nine-story uh, building. Uh, so, but this this is actually uh, just the start. Um, so these are the buildings that have been built so far, uh, and there are projects that are challenging the use of timber in tall timber buildings. And we have even a project, but this is, this is all only a project uh, of three of, of a, a skyscraper of 300 meters. There is also something similar in Japan, but. If you see here, this is one that is under construction and it's, it's challenging, but it's, it's, it's going to be about 84 meters tall. So things are, uh, well, the, the, the boundaries have been pushed and 
and, 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 and there is uh, so far ways to, to, to build uh, taller and taller in, in timber. Um, but then we are going to talk about bamboo here, about how, how, how this, uh, how all these things that I've been telling you how this relates to bamboo. So when we look at structures, uh, so tall structures built with bamboo, we have, for instance, in Colombia, we have these uh, houses in the coffee region, I think this one is in Manizales, uh, I'm sure this one is in Manizales. Uh, this is 15 meters tall and it was used using guava, our, our guava. Uh, also, uh, we have, um, um, and these are very popular internationally, you, you can see what well, this is in Hong Kong. Uh, these are, uh, it's, well, it's a skyscraper where all the scaffolding uh, is made out of bamboo. So this is 40 meters um, uh, of, uh, of, of a scaffolding with bamboo. But then the question is, okay, we have, we have this cross-laminated timber, uh, but these uh, engineer wood um, uh, buildings of 18 stories. How does it actually, how does it compare to these 40 story, well, to, to our ta tallest uh, sort of bamboo structure? Uh, so the first thing is, of course, uh, the scaffolding is non structural. The other one, the timber one, is structural. Uh, the scaffolding also uh, is temporary, it's not a permanent structure. And also it's a low added value type of structure. So that um, probably you can recycle the poles of bamboo, but many of them will be damaged and then just thrown away. So it's something temporary, low added value, uh, and, and then so we, when you compare this, these two technologies or these two buildings, of course bamboo is not, uh, well, it, it has all these connotations. So let me tell you about what I do. And it's very good that we have Hightow uh, at the beginning because part of um, what I do is a combination of the knowledge on, on um, blue laminated bamboo or the, the blue laminated bamboo and the strand woven bamboo or the screamer, which uses the temperature. But let me explain to you a little bit more. So my research work, what I do is I I work with uh, this bamboo guava um, and I transform it into an engineer bamboo product uh, with the idea or with the aim of um, converting this to, into structural building solutions. Not only tall timber, uh, not only tall bamboo buildings, but also as I'm an architect, I like um, uh, a bit of, uh, of, of, of free form structures like that. Why? So let's talk about the issues. Why, why do I do this? And the first issue, and, and you might have seen it, of course, with the example that I put of the CFT against the scaffolding, is buildability. And, well, a good example of this is um, the, um, the bridge um, uh, in, in Autopista, Autopista Calle Chente. Calle Chente. Uh, you, many of you know this bridge, but this bridge uh, well, uh, was, uh, so, so, the, so the, the process of construction, um, I got a very good friend that says, that describes building with guagua as, uh, as with bamboo as a huge handcraft. And that's, 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 that's the best description that I can, I can give. It's a, it's a, it's a huge handcraft. Why? Uh, because first, you have the regular uh, round cane, no one piece of bamboo, no one pole of bamboo is going to be the same as the other one. The diameter is going to be the same, the spaces between the nodes are going to be the internodes are going to be the same. So it's very difficult to, to standardize. Then we have problems with uh, fitting conventional uh, building uh, elements, but doors, windows, and, and all of these things in, in this type of, of, of building. So they, they become they become a real handcraft. You, you need to um, customize every single element for your building. Uh, and that happens also when you, when you build it. And this is an example, an example of one of my uh, buildings. Uh, these guys were there trying to fit these 
be in between these columns for about an hour because they wanted it to be perfect to, to, to the, for the beam to, to see on the columns, on that column that was in the middle, to sit perfectly and, and, and then bolt it together. So, so yeah, this is, this, this is what makes, part of what makes a bamboo construction a bit of a, of a handcraft or a huge handcraft. Then, um, what, another of the whys is sustainability, and we know, of course, everyone knows that bamboo is a very sustainable material. Um, and this is, of course, important when we look at uh, what's happening to the planet with climate change. Um, the ice is melting in, in the Arctic Sea and Antarctic also. Uh, we have uh, higher temperatures, and I think we are experiencing uh, that right now in our country and in both I um, think today we had probably 28 degrees, and we can have a night. Uh, five degrees or something like that. So, so those are extreme changes uh, that are happening, that have been happening uh, since the industrial revolution. And a very important factor here also to consider is, well, we need buildings to live in, we use buildings, and buildings, uh, but we, we build uh, our buildings with conventional materials, steel and concrete. And when you look at the carbon emissions, for instance, of, of the, the carbon emissions of concrete and steel, they account for about 13% of all the global carbon emissions. So the use of steel and concrete is, is creating, is having an impact on, 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 on our, on our time. And when you look at the construction industry as a whole, the construction industry contributes, uh, contributes 30% to greenhouse gases like CO2 and 40% to the use of energy. So 40% of the, of the whole energy that we use globally goes to construction, not only on the production of, of the materials, but also on the use of the buildings. So this is heating and uh, heating stuff like that also. Um, so in terms of sustainability, why, why is bamboo or why is guadua uh, such a good uh, renewable uh, material or such a, such a sustainable material is because it grows very quickly. And you might have seen videos and you might, have, you might know that uh, this plant grows from zero to 25 meters in about six months and, and of course um, uh, and, and develops uh, to, to maturity in about three to five years. So this is, this is an amazing plan that requires a lot of, uh, uh, well, that absorbs a lot of CO2 to, to produce all, all of that high, uh, all of that uh, biomass, all of that material, um, and, and of course grows very quickly. Um, and the other aspect um, of, well, when we consider uh, this sustainability, why, why bamboo can be so sustainable, and, and of course we're talking here about engineer bamboo products like the ones that Haita uh, shows us. We have um, what well, we have here um, um, a graph that shows us for two engineer bamboo products. This is the laminated bamboo and this is the screenbird or the parallel strand bamboo. And you can see here how uh, well whatever is below zero our materials or our products that fix carbon and where it's above zero uh, is our, our, all these materials that are actually um, emitting carbon, emitting through production, through the production of, of, of the material making. And well, this is over the life cycle. So, so you can see the big difference. Instead of uh, emitting carbon, uh, engineered bamboo products have the potential or do um, fix carbon. But this is also a good contrast here. Those CFD panels that have been used for these uh, high timber uh, buildings, these tall timber buildings, also have a good amount of CO2. Oh, so I got two minutes and I'm, I'm almost halfway. Uh, right, the kind of properties are very good and uh, availability. We in Colombia we have about 50,000 hectares of bamboo with, uh, with 31 million hectares around the world. 
So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to bridge the gap in between these type of structures, so the, the uses that we do on the back loop, and, and of course the potential uses uh, uh, for engineer uh, products. Um, so how I do that? It is very similar to the process of blue laminated bamboo. I cut the, the bamboo into strips, um, and then those strips are densified. It is a process of ther it's a thermal hydromechanical process, the process uh, that involves, of course, temperature, uh, moisture content, and pressure. And then what I get are these uh, strips that are effectively effectively densified. And this is a process that only lasts 15 minutes. Uh, and then after you have those uh, those strips, I uh, what, what we do we laminate them with uh, with resin and we obtain panels. And we we we've been cross laminating those panels actually to compare them with the cross laminated timber uh, products. So this is a comparison of the mechanical properties. You can see when you compare a CLT uh, of three layers and a, and a, and a cross laminated panel, guava uh, panel of three layers, the uh, modus of elasticity in compression, this is actual, uh, in compression is about twice. And the same happens when, when you see, when you look at the five, at the five layers. So what are the benefits of doing this? And so when we compare the use of, when we compare bamboo with steel, with CLT, and with these cross-laminated products that I've been working on, you can see that we have um, a lot of, uh, of good um, of, uh, takes here, uh, improvements on the, on the sustainability, on the stability, on the, uh, and on the transport of these materials, because these materials are compacted. They, instead of, well, instead of transporting round hollow cones of bamboo, we're transporting uh, a, a block of, of material. Um, but how is this important? So there are many opportunities, and in Colombia, for instance, we have a deficit of, uh, a, a housing deficit of about 2.3 million houses. This is in urban and in, uh, in rural housing. So this is something important that uh, this type of technology could, uh, could help uh, tackle. And this is not. Um, uh, this is also happening in other parts of the world. Parts of the world. Um, and just to finish up, this is part of the work I'm, in, I'm doing. Uh, we are now mixing because we what we realize that uh, a one-way solution or one material solution is it's not the way to go. It's, it's not all about concrete, it's not all about steel, it's not all about timber. So now what we're doing is we're mixing uh, softwood um, uh, timber with uh, our densified bamboo products. And this has been possible thanks to Consciences. Consciences is uh, supporting us in, in the develop, development of these products. And of course, through my work at the universities and the companies. Um, right, to finish up, um, I promise it's just 30 seconds. Um, the, one of the biggest challenges is cost. Uh, normally, um, the blue laminated uh, bamboo products are very expensive. Or, uh, sometimes you can see. Um, Price is about three thousand dollars per cubic meter. We are in a produce of a produce of about uh, well, it would be about a thousand, well, like eight hundred dollars or nine hundred dollars at the current uh, exchange rate. And well, basically, what we need is more research and more funding to get to, to develop these uh, products for. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry for for the rush, but yeah, that's me. Thank you. Institución de Educación Superior, sujeta a inspección y vigilancia por el Ministerio de Educación Nacional.